Hi everyone, I'm Gabriel Gelina from Montreal at the Le Guide de l'Auto. I'm a world car juror and we're here in California with the Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV. This is the 500 model, which means it has two electric motors. Total power output is 402 horsepower, torque is 633 pounds-feet. So it's quite the powerful machine. The battery is a 90.7 kilowatt hour battery. So we're looking in terms of range at, uh, sorry, I'm Canadian, so I'm going to give it to you in kilometers, a little over 400 kilometers. I think that works out to a little bit over 300. So it's a little bit tight as far as the range is concerned. This is also a very heavy vehicle. Again, in uh, kilograms, it's uh, two and a half metric tons, so well over 5,000 pounds. So this thing weighs as much as, let's say, a Chevy Suburban. So it's quite uh, the heavy machine. In order to make it handle, um, they've specced uh, Pirelli P0 tires, which are quite grippy. Um, and you're going to uh, need that kind of grip with a vehicle of this size and, and this weight. It's also going to wear quite quite fast. And also one key feature of this vehicle, it's got a very long wheelbase, but it has rear wheel steering, meaning that when you're turning at slow speeds uh, into, let's say, a parking maneuver at slow speeds when you're maneuvering through a parking lot, the rear wheels will actually turn opposite direction to the front wheels by up to 10 degrees to make the car a little bit more maneuverable. And when you're driving at higher speeds, um, then the rear wheels turn by a few degrees in the same direction as the front and that helps with the transitions left right in corners or let's say uh, lane changes on the highway for example. Now in terms of design um, pretty much all the electric vehicles from Mercedes-Benz share this kind of face with of course this grill which is no longer a grill but is actually a solid piece they call it the, the starlight pattern um, of course, this logo as well is, uh, is lit. All the Mercedes-Benz electric cars tend to look exactly the same, which is a little bit, um, a bit of a downside for me. They're definitely different styling uh, between the electric vehicles as opposed to the gas-powered cars at, uh, at Mercedes-Benz. And again, they all share this same kind of look. It's relatively efficient for an aero, from an aero standpoint. So the coefficient of drag of this vehicle is 0.25. So not quite as good as what uh, Tesla is able to put out, but nevertheless, still relatively efficient from an aerodynamic standpoint. So if we're looking at the rear of the car from a styling standpoint, we can see, of course, the uh, taillights, which sort of like do the entire width uh, of the vehicle. And also what you notice, which is kind of funny, is that here where you would find the uh, tailpipes of a internal combustion engine powered car, you have here these like little slats, which actually do absolutely nothing, but they sort of like are there to, I guess, I don't know, uh, remind you that uh, this car is trying to look a little bit like a regular SUV, even though it's electric. And now let's take a look at the interior of this car. So looking around, Obviously, it's a luxury vehicle and you can sort of tell because this, this wood paneling here is absolutely uh, beautiful. Um, this vehicle is equipped with the regular uh, center uh, screen. And of course, you have a display for uh, driving information right in front of the, of the driver. But what's also available in this vehicle as an option is uh, Mercedes-Benz Hyper Screen. So this is basically one large glass surface that spans from one end to the other of uh, this whole area. And it's actually composed of three different screens, obviously the one for the driver, the center here, and as well one for the passenger, but they're all under one layer of glass, which sort of like simulates the fact that this is one large uh, screen, which again, Mercedes-Benz calls the hyper screen. In terms of uh, driving controls, a lot of uh, touches here on the steering wheel, which really helps because sometimes Navigating through the features uh, and all the different functions of the car through the screen can be a little bit distracting when you're on the road. Um, but again, this, uh, this helps a lot in terms of uh, uh, keeping your eyes focused on the road uh, as you drive. Also, in order to minimize distractions while you're driving, instead of using the screen, you can also use voice controls uh, for this car to get it to do 
uh, turn on specific features or functions uh, of the vehicle. It seems to work well in English, not so much in the other languages, I can tell you from experience. Obviously, this uh, very large screen, we can access uh, different functions. For example, if we want to see exactly um, some functions with regards to the navigation, if you want to look for a charging station, a parking space, or a restaurant, things like that. Uh, we can get some information on the range of the vehicle here. Uh, we can get some information on uh, charging, what the state of the battery is, or what, what our energy consumption has been with uh, over the last uh, minutes or the last couple of miles. So again, this is pretty, um, pretty nice. Obviously here, the home button returns you uh, to the main screen and uh, you can access settings over here again you can turn on for example massage functions um, and you can also play with the ambient light which is a nice feature of this car in terms of the uh, ambient lighting that you can have uh, different colors and of course uh, different also lighting effects some people like those some people not so much again uh, more of uh, the uh, information that you can get with regards to traffic or route out, uh, overview. And this is uh, pretty cool. This is the Burmester uh, sound system, which is, I think, one of the best, if not the best, sound system that you can get in any vehicle. Here at the bottom, uh, what Mercedes-Benz calls the uh, toolbar. So you can adjust, for example, the driving modes here. Uh, so we can go from economy to maximize range. We can go to comfort. Uh, or we can go to sport and here you can access the different uh, levels for the suspension for example so we can decide that we want the drive to be in sport but we want to leave the suspension here in comfort and maybe we want the steering to be a little bit firmer and there you go so here you've got a setup where the car will feel sporty in terms of its performance but still give you a little bit more compliance with regards to, uh, to the suspension. Other features here, obviously the cameras for um, parking. And so you can select uh, all the cameras so you can see as you're parking so as to be careful not to, for example, curb a wheel on the sidewalk, things like that. And of course, again, here the, you can have a direct access to the other uh, functions of the vehicle. So active steering assist, downhill speed reduction, uh, even a car wash mode, which will, of course, turn off the wipers so they don't activate because of the rain sensor is, is coming on. So there's, again, quite a lot of features here. And, of course, volume controls here for the uh, sound system, which you will find here as well on the, um, on the uh, steering wheel. And you can also access here the uh, home menu, again, with uh, this uh, little touch here, capacitive touch on uh, the steering wheel. Cruise control, adaptive, of course, that's over on the left-hand side. And here's more like the uh, voice activating function, this uh, star key, which takes you right to a setting that you've already selected uh, and programmed. So you have direct access for that. And as well, the telephone functions here. Now, in terms of um, how this vehicle drives, again, it's a very heavy vehicle. Like I mentioned, almost as much weight here as a Chevy Suburban. And so when you're cornering, going through the corners, you really feel uh, all that mass. So it's not necessarily a great vehicle to drive as far as uh, handling or dynamics are concerned. It is, however, very, very comfortable very quiet. Um, there's very little wind noise. Um, and also there's so much power here under your right foot that when you're driving in traffic, when you see, for example, a, a gap somewhere on the freeway, you can just look at it, point the car in direction, press the throttle and boom, you're there instantly. So that's a given with pretty much all of the electric vehicles, especially those like this one that have a lot of power. They're very, very fast in a straight line, but there's only so much that the engineers can do with regards to electronics or stability control systems to sort of like mask the weight of, uh, of the vehicle. Like I always say, mass is mass, you know, there's no two ways about it and you can't go around the laws of physics. So if you've got a big heavy vehicle, 
it's going to feel that way in the corners and you really have to reduce your speed considerably uh, to go through the twisty stuff like we just did on the Angels Crest Highway here in California. Uh, but having said that, if you're not into sporty driving, if you're not a driving enthusiast and you're looking for something that's quiet, that's comfortable, uh, this one will pretty much do the job. Another downside perhaps is the uh, limited range. You know, again, it's a heavy vehicle, even though the battery is 90.7 kilowatt hours of capacity, you're sort of like limited in terms of, uh, of range with this, uh, with this vehicle. And there are a lot of um, other electric SUVs which will give you more range uh, than this one. You should also perhaps point out that there is uh, an AMG variant of this vehicle. So here, obviously, it's the same vehicle basically, but they've worked a lot with AMG with regards to uh, different windings, for example, on the electric motors to give the car more performance. And so we're talking about well over 600 horsepower for that uh, AMG uh, version. And also they've done a lot of uh, work with regards to suspension tuning, wheels and tires to again, uh, make the car handle uh, better. Um, but again, you still have the same limitations in terms of range. Actually, the AMG version has a little bit less range because it has so much more power.